Hello there and welcome. In this episode we're going to continue working on our game, so before we move on to our next big system, we want to make our unit look a bit better, we want to add some cursors, we want to also add this special line that appears to indicate the direction of the unit, we can find this in red alert and that's something that I like. So we're going to add it into this game. Of course, it's optional. You don't have to do it. In the next episode, we're going to start working on the building system. So it's a very big and important system for an RTS game. We're going to be able to construct different buildings, buildings that are responsible for power or generating other units. But for now, we want to be done with these small things. So in order to save time, I decided to provide you all the scripts you need for this episode in a Unity package. You can find a link in the description. And we're going to simply import the package into our assets folder. You simply download it and then you drag it over here. So you're going to find something like this, a few scripts and a few prefabs. You're also going to find a few animations that are related to these prefabs. I just have them in a different folder. So we're going to use all of these assets in this episode. Before we continue, I just want to mention that soon I'm going to be adding memberships into this channel. It means that you're going to be able to select a tier of support and you're going to get different perks depending on this tier. Also, every member will have access to our new Discord server. So all of these things are very new and it's going to take time until everything is going to work smoothly. But this is something that is going to happen soon. So you can simply look for the join button. If you see it, you can select a different tier and then you're going to get access to all of these perks. Each tier will give you more perks. You're going to be able to access the Discord server and over there you're going to be able to ask for help. And it's going to be better because there other people can help you and I'm going to be able to help you even better because you're going to be able to share your files or screenshots. And this is something that's very hard to do in the comment section of the video. So this is something that will come soon and I just want to let you know. So the first thing we want to deal with in this episode is creating this indicator line. So when we select our unit and we click somewhere, we want to let the player know what is the direction of the unit. So if we go to these assets, we can find this direction indicator. So we're simply going to select our unit and we're going to drag the script on the unit. Now, when we add this script, we're going to automatically get this line render over here because this script requires this component. So it's going to be added automatically. Next, we want to add a reference to the camera. So we're simply going to log this thing over here. We're going to open our camera controller and we're going to drag the main camera into this slot. Now, if we scroll down to the line render, we can see that the width is rather big so we're simply going to decrease it and we can do it by simply clicking over here and then putting it manually 1.0 then we also want to remove the shadows because we don't want any shadows on this line then we also want to add the material because we want this line to have a special color and we're going to use our emission material so you're going to get it in this package but it's something we created before so if we go to materials and debug or actually ui we can find this green emission so we're simply going to drag it into this slot we also want to disable the cast shadows so we're going to set it to be off now we want to be able to activate this line render each time we move the unit each time we click somewhere on the ground so we're going to double click on our unit movement script. Inside we're going to add a reference to the indicator. So direction indicator. Then we're going to get this component inside the start method. And if we control click on this script, we can see that inside we have this method named draw line and we need to receive a raycast to draw this line. So we go to the update method inside the unit movement and over here when we click on the ground we're also going to call this method so direction indicator draw line and we're going to pass inside the hit that we got from the raycast and now it should actually work so if we run the game 
we select the unit and we click somewhere, we're going to see this line showing. Now the unit is moving slowly, he turns slowly, and that's just because of the way the nav mesh agent is set up. We're going to change that, but we can also see that if we duplicate our unit and we get a few more units, it will work and we can see the direction the units are going. So because we want them to move around faster, we're going to remove the other ones and we're going to focus on one. We're going to change a few settings inside the nav mesh agent. So we're going to increase the angular speed to about 2000. Now I don't really know at what point it doesn't really make any difference. So I'm just going to set it to be something very high and I'm going to increase the acceleration. Next, we want to scroll down to the capsule collider and just make sure that the radius is one because we want to increase the way the unit is interacting with other units. And now the unit will turn much faster. And it will look much more natural. Of course, if you want to really fine tune it and make it look very good, you should also add some animations for the turning. So when he turns right, you're going to play some kind of turning animation, but this is a very basic model that doesn't come with these animations. This is just for our testing. So if you have your actual game and you're going to have some quality models, then they will probably have some kind of turning or strafing animation, and this will look much better. Also make sure that the auto braking is not enabled. Next, we want to change the cursors in the game because at the moment we have this boring cursor, but what if we want to hover over our unit and select it? Maybe we want to select a building or we want to attack an enemy. It should change the cursor accordingly. For this, we're going to open the asset package that I provided and we're going to drag the cursor manager into the scene. So the job of this manager is to simply change the different cursors depending on the state. So if we hover over one of our units, it's going to change the cursor to be this selectable cursor. If we're going to hover over an enemy unit, it's going to change it into this attackable cursor. If we just hover and we want to let the player know that he can walk somewhere, we're going to change it into this walkable cursor. And we can also see that the references are already here. So we have this walkable cursor, we have this selectable one, and we have this attackable one. All of them are children of the cursor manager and they're all deactivated and we're going to activate them depending on the state. So for example, if we're going to enable this walkable cursor, We can see that this is the way it's going to look. It doesn't really matter what is the position of it right now, but we just want to make sure that it's very close to the ground. So we can simply take the cursor manager and move it down. And let's disable this one and make sure that all of them are on the ground level. And of course you can change them. This is just a mesh that has an animator and this will simply run this animation. So it's going to look a bit better. Now, although I provided you with most of the scripts, we do need to add some code into our existing scripts. So we're going to open our unit selection manager and inside at the bottom of the update method. So at the very bottom, we're going to call a method named cursor selector. We're going to generate it. And over here, we're simply going to cast some raycasts to detect the state of the cursor. So if we hit a unit, then we're going to know that we're hovering over a unit. If we hit the ground and the unit is selected, we're going to display the walkable cursor. And if we hover over an enemy, we're going to display the attackable cursor.
So it's very simple. We're simply casting a ray into the world. Then we have all of these layers that we created previously. We have the clickable layer, we have the attackable layer, and we have the ground layer. Then we check if the ray is hitting the clickable layer, it means that it hits a unit that belongs to us or maybe a building later, then it's going to set the cursor to be the selectable cursor. But if the ray is hitting the attackable layer, which is an enemy unit, and we're also selecting a unit, and we also have at least one offensive unit selected, we're going to set the attackable cursor. But if we're hitting the ground and we also have at least one unit selected, we're going to display the walkable cursor. But if all of these are not true, we're simply going to show the default cursor. And now just for the example, we're going to select our infantry unit. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to rename this one to be enemy. We're going to add the enemy tag and we're also going to make it attackable. We only want this object and we're also going to make sure that it's not a player. Now we're going to move it over here and we're going to run the game. So now when we are not selecting anything, we have our default cursor, but if we select our unit, we're going to see this walkable cursor and we can simply click anywhere we want and it's going to move the unit. Now, because the unit is still selected, we're still going to see this cursor, but if we left click and deselect, it's going to go back to the default cursor. Now, if we hover over the unit, it's going to change it into this selectable cursor. And now we can know that we can select it. And if we hover and we select our unit and then we point and hover over an enemy, it's going to show this attackable cursor. Of course, you can change the cursors, you can change the way they look, maybe you don't like this style, but this is what we're going to use. Good. The next thing we want to do is get rid of our ground marker, the old one that was not animated, and we're simply going to delete it from the scene and we're going to add the new ground marker. We have the prefab over here. We're also going to make sure that it sticks to the ground. So let's double click on it and go to the scene view. We're going to make sure that it's above the ground and we're going to add it into the unit selection manager. We have the reference over here and we're going to disable it. Now it also have an animation, so you're going to see how it looks. So if we select our unit and we click somewhere, we can see this little wave and this is the ground marker. Now, of course, you can change the duration. The line will appear. For example, you can go over here to the direction indicator and you can change the line display time. So if you want the line to appear for longer, maybe you want to change the origin offset. So this is the point where the line will come out of. You can also play around with the line render. Maybe you want it a bit wider. Maybe you want to change the material. So all of these things are customizable. I'm just showing you how you can group everything together. So for now, for this episode, we are done. We just wanted to add a few more things to make the game look a bit better. And in the next episode, we're going to finally start with the construction system. It's going to be a very big system. It's going to take time, but I'm also going to provide you all of the scripts so we don't waste time on writing down code. Of course, it's important for you to remember that I'm not just providing you a game that you need to copy and then you have your own finished game. You're still going to have to learn. You're still going to have to add your own things, you're going to have to adjust things, you're going to have to fix bugs, because I'm not really covering all of the different scenarios, the different things that can happen. So if something is not working, it's not just because I forgot about it, but it's just because I didn't cover it, and I'm probably not going to cover everything, because you still need to create and adjust and fine-tune to have a full game, right? I'm not giving you a free game, 
I'm showing you and teaching you how to use Unity to create your own game. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. It will help me a lot. It will support me. Join our Discord server. You're going to be able to get faster responses from me and from the different community members. And I'll see you next time.